little backstory. We just recorded almost a whole episode and um, I didn't click record. So, well, I don't contribute anything to this recording process, so I can't even be mad. It's because I'm, I'm half asleep. I told you, I, well, I'm literally half asleep. I'm not mad at all because I don't do anything. I just sit down. So she just shows up. I just and, show up. And brings the wisdom. That's what I tell her. <laughs> so I'm like, I have nothing to be mad about because I'm certainly not helping you with anything. <laughs> so I just gotta wake up. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome back to the Wildflower Podcast. Today I'm excited, well, excited is probably not the right word, but I'm excited <laughs> for this conversation because I think a lot of people have asked Ashton about some of her health journey. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to dive in and talk a little bit more in depth about some of the things that she's walked through. I know people are interested in that. Maybe you, you're dealing with some of the same things. And so we're going to talk about a lot of that. I, I wouldn't say exciting is the right <laughs> word because it is, um, it's a lot, you know, but. Um, yeah. Exciting. Well, I mean, I'm excited to be at. I feel like on the other side to some extent of all of it. So Mm -hmm. that's exciting. Yeah, (laughs) totally. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm not super prepared, but I feel like I just (laughs) want to talk organically about what's been going on. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have seen that have walked with me, have seen like a lot of things. I feel like I'm trying to think of the year that it just went haywire. I believe it was 2018, really more towards the end of 2018. Um, Yeah. I was gonna say, I feel like 2019. It was 2019. It was really 2019. Um, I'd say probably the beginning at the very end of 2018 was when I started having some sporadic symptoms, which really go back to after I had Taya, when you actually date back to some of these gut and stomach issues I had occurring after I had Taya, Mm -hmm. I ended up in the ER a couple of times with just, um, quite a bit of stomach pain and, you know, so that was a slow progression, but it wasn't consistent and it wasn't enough to like derail me. Cause let's, if we go back, like when I met you, like before all of this, I would say like you ate anything you wanted. Mm-hmm. You'd be like eating Cheez-Its and like eating oh, I part of Taya's peanut butter and jelly. Food. And I never dieted. Laying in bed, eating your chocolate Yum. Hershey drops, you and know. my chocolate blueberries. Yeah, those so from yummy. Costco. They're so good. <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So like I would say like you never dealt with a lot of those things. No, I, uh, no, I, uh, I mean, I had like recurring sinus infections in my early 20s and st- and kind of stuff like that but I, I always generally ate what I wanted growing up I had food allergies to like certain fruits and stuff that really well I had bad I have bad a- environmental allergies and yeah. I have since I was a child but we were at, we figured out that those cross reacted with certain fruits and foods during like pollen season yeah. so like certain fruits I couldn't eat um because just are we, are we we're good we're rolling okay good. <laughs> because you know of just that and so I had some of that growing up but nothing to the extent of what I've endured since 2018 um so after I had Taya like I mean, I was really sick with Taya though. Like I yeah. threw up quite a bit, had a really bad morning sickness, had a really kind of hard, pregnancy. not really kind of a hard pregnancy. Yeah. You had kidney stones. I had kidney stones. I had preeclampsia. I vomited all the time. It was just, yeah. Whew, it was, it was tough. It was a lot. It was a lot. And so I had a slow progression of things kind of onsetting after I had Taya, just unexplained random weird things I'd never experienced before. Like what? Like, you know, I was having really bad stomach pain. Um, I would eat certain foods and my stomach would bloat and I'd have severe stomach pain or like crazy like diarrhea and just crazy yeah. stomach stuff. And I'd end up at the ER with, you know, blood crazy. and things like that. So TMI, it's a lot, but like just like bad GI issues wasn't consistent. Like after every time I would eat things, it would just kind of flare. And so they're kind of like, you have IBS. So I I'd had a colonoscopy, stuff like that. You have IBS. Well, that's yeah, broad. And broad. they kind of like term that when they can't figure out what's really wrong with you. So, mm-hmm. but in 2018, um, I still had sporadic gut issues for, you know, since I had Taya and in 2018, I started to have vertigo. So the first time I actually ever experienced vertigo. And if you've ever had vertigo, it, I, I deem it the worst thing I've dealt with. Mm-hmm. I've dealt with a lot of things I and mean, kidney stones weren't fun. But vertigo to me is the worst thing ever because it actually debilitates. Like you can't do anything. Yeah. It when was your like, head is off, like <coughs> I've, I've only, I've had, I've had like vertigo episodes maybe like five times mm-hmm. in my life, like a handful of times, mm-hmm. but it is the craziest thing. It is. And like, it's different than being dizzy. I think some people classify vertigo with just dizziness. Mm-hmm. No, like the first time it hit me, it was actually teaching at bar method. Um, I thought I was. I don't know. I didn't know what was happening to me because I had never, ever had it. I was just teaching and I like bent down to like fix someone's feet Mm -hmm. and I stood up and I had no equilibrium. Like the room was like rocking back and forth. Yeah. I started to feel like I was about to vomit. I was sweating and the room started to move. And so I hobbled over. Fortunately, one of our teachers was in class and I hobbled over to her and just gave her the mic and barely made it out the door before I fell to the floor because 
I couldn't stand up anymore. And I didn't know. Obviously, they were like, do we need to call an ambulance? ambulance. We don't yeah. know what's going on because I had never had it. So I threw up. The room was spinning. Uh, my ear was ringing. It was awful. Crazy. That was the first time I ever experienced it and never did. And, um, and so it was about five minutes long. So that began this journey of the short but very intense um, vertigo spells that I would have. And then it progressed into, you know, 2019. I'd say after we went to Hawaii, it changed everything because I came back and I was having this severe like sinus pain, Mm -hmm. vertigo. I would have vertigo spells, but then I would have days where I just felt like off in the head. Like my head was in a fishbowl. It's hard to explain, but like I'd feel like off, but then I'd have like weird dizzy sick head feeling I don't it's mm-hmm. and worst. I feel like in this process I remember you were like she was really I feel like you're such an advocate for yourself of trying to seek out like right. different chiropractors and different like functional like functional medicine or like natural paths well like, at first they thought it was just from like I was in a bad you were in car, a car wreck accident. Yeah. I was in a bad car accident in 2018 totaled my car obviously I had whiplash all the things sprained my wrist like it was a bad it was a bad car wreck so at first they thought okay this is because your spine's off maybe that's what triggered the vertigo so I started with a chiropractor um never got better finally after seeking a chiropractor multiple chiropractors they were like one guy was he was more you know natural like a natural homeopathic chiropractor was like you might have allergies Mm -hmm. some kind of allergies that's that's why I can't help you because it's not stemming from like muscular or like yeah, out of line it, he, or he was like it's it's out of my control I mean I saw neurologists because I was having migraine headaches um and you know when you go to different doctors they just label you with something and they want to give you medication to mask it mm-hmm. you know and and I was like I am too young at this point I'm 28 29 I'm too young or 30 too young to be hooked to antidepressants. And the neurologist is like, you know, migraines can be anxiety or stress related. You know, people, sometimes people don't manage their stress well. I'm like, girl, you don't know me. Yeah. And not that, I mean, yes, I've dealt with stressful situations, but never Mm -hmm. to the point of like, debilitating headaches vertigo and yeah. dizziness where I couldn't get my life together no because in so as somebody who walked through you like very closely with all of this and this was frequent I, feel I was like not you're, functioning you're speaking, in 2019 you're speaking very high level yeah. which is good <laughs> because of the nature of what we're doing here but like the reality is is that this happened these vertigo spells started happening more weekly and more frequently. two times a week one time it happened when I was driving it was horrifying and in the process she still I felt terrible course, in between them so I would yeah. I mean I literally woke up I'd sleep 12 hours a day I you know this is also going in the middle of infertility stuff too so I thought that some of that emotional some of the Stress, illness I felt yeah. might have been just emotional tur- turmoil yeah so that was a part of it that I do think contributed to the symptoms being exasperated how do you say that word exasperated yeah yeah. And, um, you know, yeah, no, I, in 2019, I stopped functioning. Like I, but she was still functioning because she was like still teaching classes and she I was, was still, still being a mom going, and handling her responsibilities, was, which, which when most people in this scenario is feeling as bad as you felt would literally lay in bed all day. Yeah. I mean, I fought through it. I thought it was going to be my reality. I mean, really it was like, I mean, all or myriad of symptoms, the stomach issues, the vertigo, the sinus pain, the ear ringing. I was like, why is my body not functioning? And every day I'd get up, I would feel like I was going to throw up or I'd feel like hungover, mm-hmm. lethargic. Um, I ended up having joint pain. I mean, when it was my worst, I was like, everything is going wrong like with glitching. Me. Everything's going haywire. I mean, I was like, am I like, they're missing something, you yeah. know? Cause I saw an ENT, I saw a neurologist. They're like, you just have vestibular migraines. I'm like, but why is my entire body not functioning? It's not just like I have headaches and then I'm fully energized, you yeah. know? And so it was a really, really dark, expensive, it's still expensive because I, you know, still have battled a lot of things. But in 2020, I finally saw a doctor that we linked a lot of my issues to allergies, food allergies. I did like a blood test that showed that I was very, very sensitive to gluten. I'm very, very sensitive to casein and whey, which are proteins that are found in dairy products mm-hmm. or milk products. Um And I was so inflamed that they were like, you need to be on an inflammatory diet, you know, for six months and no sugar, no anything like basically whole 30 for six months. Like you do not need to be eating anything processed, whatever, because they thought I had Lyme disease. I mean, there's been multiple autoimmune disorders that they were trying to link towards because I had ANA titers that were super high in my blood that they couldn't pinpoint why I had all of these autoimmune antibodies that were flared up. They thought, okay, well, it could be Lyme, but Lyme's really unknown. And I didn't, this guy was a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's hard too. I feel like I'm sure because like when you see so many people, you get all these different opinions. Right. And you're like sort of 
trying to find the root of the, the pieces, issue. The, the root of it. And at least the uh, functional medicine guys like really found a root of, yeah. So when I started to eat, when I eliminated gluten out of my diet and some of those other inflammatory foods, I did get better, mm-hmm. lost way too much weight. Um, and so, you know, that really kickstarted me getting better. I stopped having vertigo. Yeah. I mean, so in 2020, for me eliminating those things in my diet, I stopped having vertigo. So, so it was like, remarkable like this is great I mean I still wasn't like fully myself but I I was getting better you know I'd say after at the end of 2021 I started to kind of go backwards a bit and so I feel like seeing seeing little steps like I've told you so much along the ways I was like man you're getting better like I think if you look at it as a whole you can go oh like you know, is this my reality? But the reality oh. is that I'm like, man, look how far you've come well, and compared I'm to where high you were. Level, Cause 2019 and 2020 was, were terrible years. Intense. They were like, I remember you saying you're like, this is worse than the infertility. Oh, I said it feeling even, bad every day. Like a hundred percent. I was like, Lord, if you'll just heal my body, I won't ever ask for anything ever again. Yeah. You know, I, you know, being young and active like I am and feeling like you're just at the end of your rope, which I'll obviously go deeper into another episode about really the emotional and spiritual thing I walked through and all of Mm -hmm. that sickness time, because that in itself is separate. (laughs) I'm just like like, a whole separate journey. I'm just talking (laughs) about like, no, what's like, what's wrong with me, which today I'm talking high level about what I dealt with health wise, but what it does to you spiritually, mentally, physically. I mean, I told Tyler, like, I, I'm not, I don't want to live like this. I had never in my life ever felt like I wanted to give up like that. Yeah. Cause I was that, just not in the right headspace, you know, just felt hopeless. Like, Mm -hmm. Lord, I want to find out what's wrong with me. And like, you know, the Lord took me through so many things there. I mean, I was at the end. When I say I woke up every day, didn't feel good. You saw it. Yeah. I mean, it was miserable. I, I, I was miserable. And I told, and that really changed everything for my husband. He's like, you've never, ever verbalized anything like that. Like he was like, you've never said that you don't want to be alive anymore. I was like, how can I? But I mean, you know, there's people that, you know, godly people that's you know prayed the spirit of death over off of me yeah you know off of me and like we cast out a lot of things that I had like taken um in that season of hopelessness you know the enemy wanted to tell me like this is your reality yeah you're gonna deal with this forever and almost like you know you know what because I told the Lord like Lord if this is it for me like I'm still gonna choose to serve you yeah I remember praying that prayer and it was almost like not almost like someone told me he's like Ashton like the Lord's you know The Lord loves your yes, but he's saying, you know, you know, to die is to gain, Mm -hmm. but to live is Christ. Right. You know, he's like, you're not done. Yeah. So don't be writing your, not goodbyes, but just going, you know, this is my reality. He's like, do not accept that. Do not come into agreement with that. You know, he's like, the Lord's like, that's not, this is not your reality. And so it was almost like, I was like, okay. You know, I remember calling him and being like, I'm at the end of my rope. I'm about to wig out. Like, if you don't come over and pray for me or figure, like, yeah. if I don't get whatever I'm dealing I'm being tortured and harassed right now. My thought, I can't, and I mean, I've never been in that. I've always been the person yeah. that's like, let's get a handle Strong on it. Strong and, yeah. And I couldn't get a handle on it because yeah. I was so fearful, so bound by fear that this was my reality, mm-hmm. that I was going to be 20, you know, 29, 30, 31 years old and I'm going to be chronically ill. I mean, that's, it's crazy what you think when you get into your circumstances and I was letting my circumstances dictate Dictate, what I knew to be about, what I knew to be true about God. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, Lord, you said, you know, that the widow comes to you and prays and that you answer her persistent prayers. Why do you not hear me? Why do you not see me? And the Lord's Mm -hmm. like, I am healing you. Yeah. You just think it looks like just instant miracle signs and wonders. I thought that God heal me. Like you heal the Mm -hmm. the man in the Bible. Yeah. Touching his, touch me. Yeah. Or touching the, like the woman touched the garment. garment, And that's all it took. But the reality is that sometimes the healing is a process. Like you, you you have like you today is night and day from where you were then. So it's like, I think that's a constant reminder of going, man, Mm -hmm. you are in this healing process and you've come such a long way don't discount that I think I'm gonna be ungrateful to God because I was just like so focused on what I thought he should do instead of what he was doing Mm -hmm. like this is how you should heal me God just snap me out of my reality the Lord's like I am healing you look at your heart yeah look at your mind look at your spirit your physical body will follow and when he told me that I was like huh wow I am being healed from the inside out. I remember him telling me like your, your insides have to be healed before your body can experience the fullness of what I have for you. Mm -hmm. So in that season, he was healing me from the inside out and he's still healing me. I'm like, I still don't understand why I've had to walk through it. I mean, like I said, this is very high level. I mean, it was awful. I hated my life. Well, I mean, and even still, you know, I would say like right now, like with the different tests and things that you've done, like you're very aware that like right now, like, you cannot have gluten. Yeah. So, Bottom line. So 2020 happened, 22. I was under the impression that 
for whatever reason, stress, anxiety, life like had inflamed my body. I had these sensitivities and that once I eradicated it, healed my gut because I had really bad leaky gut um, and just inflammation throughout my whole body that I thought, okay, well, I can slowly start maybe introducing these things in small doses into my into my diet again. And, you know, kind of started to do that a little bit in 2021, but I honestly went backwards really fast and it was super discouraging because I'm over here going, I spent a year and a half healing my gut, making sacrifices. I mean, I didn't submitting to the process, submitting to the process, like being disciplined because it sucks. I loved, I love food. People think, Oh, Ashton, you know, she's fit. And like, she, she literally before all of this, like when it was her birthday, (laughs) Tyler would give her an entire salt grass cheesecake. (laughs) It's like, huge and she would Dense. every night you'd go <laughs> oh, into, we'd get pictures from tyler and she'd be standing at the kitchen fridge I just like digging sugar. into the I was addicted cheesecake to with sugar. a fork <laughs> i still i miss it and i felt like so just distraught because i'm like i'm sacrificing all these things that people don't have to do watching my friends eat cookies and it sounds shallow but when luckily you, if, it, if it helps like i never eat you don't cookies. eat cookies but you you know <laughs> so i mean I it's shallow anymore. but that was the reality of my process. Like I want to enjoy what people are enjoying. Mm-hmm. I, why am I sacrificing this to just be healthy? Like I, I, I was like really upset about that. You they know? also like think about in the Bible, like it talks about like food is literally just meant to energize us. Like it's oh, like yeah. literally what it's meant for. It's not to food be is fuel. It's, fu- it's fuel. And I learned and, about so a lot of So then you go, that. okay, like if I just, I mean, I know that the, everyone around you is hard, but it's like, you go, okay is what it's meant for like well submitting to that process and I did I said I will do anything to To get better better. like I told Tyler I I will do anything like if that means I cut these things out of my diet I don't care like I was at that point yeah the process sucked but at the end of the day like I did get better started to introduce the pros outweighed the the pros outweighed the cons because I'm like you know hey I just want to live a full life and you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be like, oh, I don't have the strength to do it. Lord, you said your strength is made perfect in my weakness. Like, here mm-hmm. we go. Yeah. Keep me on, keep my eyes focused on you. Keep, you know, allow doors to open to the where I can make, we can make this work as a family. Cause I mean, mm-hmm. me eating this way affected everybody. Yeah. And I slowly started to introduce some stuff back in the end of 2021 very end of it around the holidays. I kind of was like, Hey, look, let's see. I've been really healing my gut. Let's see if I can start eating some of this stuff. I went backwards. Like I started having vertigo weekly. Um, the same lies that the enemy was trying to like bring upon me again were kind of coming back on like, see, you're not past this. This is your reality. You know, yeah. fear. God's not healing vertigo you. Vertigo is you're, just, yeah. God's not healing you. See, you thought you were going to get better. This is your lot. Whatever. So all these things, you know, and um, finally I have found out that they think I have celiac. <laughs> Mm-hmm. out of all the tests um which I've is kind of weird that they wouldn't have like tested you for that sooner well but especially with how high my sensitivity was to i'm gluten, surprised like that think. it's just so misunderstood it's yeah. so i feel like this issue with gluten is so misunderstood and it's not really confirmed and there's even like regular doctors that are just like you know this isn't really a thing but i've seen it firsthand completely wreak havoc on my body yeah and you know i did this like crazy i did all the tests like for, i had never seen a rheumatologist so i did a lot of tests blood tests to like confirm i don't have lupus and all these other terrible mm-hmm. autoimmune diseases yeah and i did like a test that specifically focused on wheat and the proteins found in wheat and my score was off the chart and intestinal permeability, which I've gone to GI doctors like the gastro. And again, I've had a colonoscopies. I never had an endoscopy, which is the way, seal, which is like your small they, intestine. Yeah. So I've never had it looked at, which it's damaged for sure. Like that's the mm-hmm. point of it is I have malabsorption issues. They were like, you have anemia. Like, why do you have anemia? Why do you have metabolic disorder? Why do you have a fatty liver? There's all these things that came up in my blood work that really they weren't were like, what is this in such a young mm-hmm. woman? Well, anytime I ingest gluten, it's damaging the All lining of my small things. intestine. Yeah. So which cause, causes the malabsorption, causes the leaky gut, the terrible intestine, like just the bad bacteria in my gut. And mm. so once I got those tests back, it actually gave me peace <laughs> because she's like, you know, hey, sweetheart, like it doesn't matter if you have an eighth of a teaspoon of gluten. Like if you eat like a half a piece of toast, like that's setting you back 20 to 30 steps because of just your it's genetic crazy. makeup. Mm-hmm. And she said, you know, surgeries or pregnancy can send – like something that might be dormant. She's like, it can just activate it, yeah. which actually makes sense as to why after Tay, I started to have so worse. Yeah. issues. Um, and so it's not me coming into agreement with, you know, this is my forever, but it, no. at the same time, you have to be smart and wise and make choices for your body that, you know, 
are just better. You know, I was having issues too. I just like gained some weight back. Well, I was too thin. I lost too much weight. Then I gained weight back. And then I was just in this yo-yo place where it's like, my, and I was having so much stomach pain again yeah, um, and dizziness. And so, you know, long story, we're finally figuring out that, you know, the way that gluten actually affects me from a neurochemical perspective gluten ataxia or atax- I don't know how you pronounce it ataxia so like when I eat when I ingest it this is why they can never figure it's like a delayed response so my antibodies are like AG IgG and IgA which it's not the anaphylactic allergic response right. where you know people that yeah. have peanuts or they have some kind of nut and they immediately like go into go anaphylactic into their throat shock. closes up yeah not me mine's delayed so those certain antibodies are delayed so that's why they can never pinpoint what was actually affecting me because sometimes sense. I would eat food and I wouldn't immediately feel bad. Yeah. I mean, sometimes with my stomach, depending on what the food was, I'd immediately have stomach issues. But in general, the vertigo, the dizziness, the migraines, the headaches, the sinus pain, the, all the things, it'd be delayed a couple of days. So crazy. So then I couldn't even pinpoint if it was what I ate that day, if it was what mm-hmm. I ate two days. That's that's why they couldn't ever, they're like, make a food diary. I'm like, I am. And yeah, I can't pinpoint it to one certain food because I didn't have immediate reactions that's like the, what they were looking for. And mm-hmm. so- Long story, like those specific antibodies that I have are delayed immune responses. Yeah. So if I have a full meal that has gluten in it, usually I'd start feeling bad a couple of days later, which what with the dizziness, the vertigo mm-hmm. spell, the brain, the fog, migraines, the yeah. migraines, the the gut pain. And so that's really why I feel like it prolonged a lot of these issues. You know, mm-hmm. I haven't had and you know, every now and then on the weekend I'd have a meal that had gluten in it. And so I didn't like once I got better, I started to kind of introduce it a little bit more. And so that's why my body started to go. It just, those mm-hmm. tiny, those one meals accumulated mm-hmm. and my gut became right back to square one. Yeah. Toxic. Um, toxics. Yeah. So, you know, I don't eat gluten anymore. Well, I, I haven't really since 2020. So the last two and a half years, I've avoided gluten 90% of the time, 95% of the time. And now I'm just fully aware of the fact that I just cannot have it. So yeah. living a gluten-free lifestyle has been um, a challenge and a transition for our whole family. Mm-hmm. There's lots of options now. Yeah. Um, way more than there was like way more, way more. But like, you know, coming to the realization that things can't even be cross-contaminated has mm-hmm. been humbling. Yeah. Because I have to everywhere I go is, is there gluten in this? Mm-hmm. Is the, you know, if I go anywhere, we, we meal prep a lot. We have a guy that, you know, cooks some meals for us that has been such a godsend and a blessing, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, it's just been, it just makes something that should be <laughs> simple, not simple. Well, and when you have and all I those think, symptoms, I think that's something that you can sit there and look at and go Ugh, like everybody else just gets to eat normal. Like, why do I even have to deal with this or think about this? You know? And I think, you've had to like, yeah, really keep your mind, you know, Oh, it sucks. it's such a I love food. mental battle. You yeah. Know, I lo- and I love like cakes and cookies, but the good news is that, um, I am believing that, you know, God has been healing me. It's been, we've yeah. spent tons and tons of money getting to the root because when you have all those symptoms too, and you go to like an ENT or a neurologist or whatever, they're treating the symptom. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have migraines. Okay. Right. Not the root. And when you have like, and she's like literally one of the doctors that have ha- that's helped me. She's like, when you have like small intestine issues or celiac, or when you ingest it, like the gut's the center of all of your health. So it's crazy. You could have a myriad. It's not just gut pain. You can have yeah. a myriad of symptoms. symptoms. And in my case, the way it affects me neurochemically, am I like nervous system? in your head? Yeah, I mean, I experienced it. She's like, not everybody does have that, but she's like, I mean, that's what derailed me. The stomach pain wasn't ideal, but. I mean, the dizziness but when your head's off, because I, I get pretty bad migraines, too, and, and actually decently freak like pretty frequently. Um, and it's like when you it's like I'll get a migraine and then your head's still not normal the next day. It's like a migraine hangover and you're not actually better until the third or fourth day. It's it's a lot. And that's kind of like how I lived. Like yes, I would basically recover perpetually, and then it would ha- perpetually and then something else would happen, whether it was a migraine or another. Because we didn't thing. know that I had such a bad allergy to gluten. Yeah. Or, or you know such a sensitivity or this auto because like I said this is the autoimmune thing that they kept not being Mm -hmm. able to pinpoint but again not until here recently one doctor's like we need to test you for celiac although I went to the GI doctor and she's like the way we test for gluten is to eat abundance an abundance of gluten for four weeks and then we test you you're like that that is so bad like that would 
send me I was into pissed. like a downward spiral. It would, especially if you have it and yeah. you're da- so damaged. I'm like, there's nothing. And so I found a functional doctor who's like, absolutely not, sweetheart. We'll do a blood work test, which they, it is hard to pinpoint. Mm-hmm. So like non-celiac, um, gluten sensitivity, and celiac are like the same. Mm-hmm. I mean, and she's like, sometimes people test wrong, but she's like, we treat it, we treat it the same. Yeah. Um, and so... It's like a needle in a haystack. I feel like this journey that you've been on, and I will say, like I said earlier, I feel like you've been such a, like something I feel like is really good about you is that you've really, I feel like you've gone, okay, I'm not going to live like this and I won't stop until I get answers because you've gone to so many doctors. I feel like a lot of people just go to one doctor and be like, okay, this is what they said. Guess this is it. Well, hopefully my husband listens to this and loves that statement from you. It's true. Because it's been so expensive and so... um, debilitating but you know I will say um, I'm a get stuff done kind of girl and I was like I will not live like this we will figure out and what is go- wrong with you me. know thank god you've had the means to be able to do it because it's like that way you can actually get healthier and get we're, better you know functional medicine nothing is taken by insurance no. right so like these functional oh holistic health doctors have helped me changed everything of what I know about your diet which even if I could eat what I wanted I wouldn't ever again yeah <laughs> because now I, un- I understand the process of like how food heals affects you and affects you and everything. is the root of all disease I yeah mean, obviously there's things that happen we have genetic markers there's things that are out of our control but like what you feed your body is everything and it's even on the surface level I mean it's a direct reflection of everything like your skin mm-hmm. has to do with how you eat how hydrated are you well, stress. Like all these and things stress, stress destroys I mean, your gut oh, I know we like look at pictures of ourselves mm-hmm. before we had kids and oh, we looked man. I mean obviously we were younger but like when you go through the phases of not sleeping and stuff, you just start looking haggard. Oh, it's, and, and kids are so sweet. They're so sweet. And but woo, woo. And I'm even being on this health journey, like this health journey. It's been a process of me getting healthy from the inside out. So I had breast you know, implants. I just keep hearing that song. Remember that from the inside. Yeah. Out, so cry. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. But you know, I had my breast implants taken out in 2020, which yeah. I had breast implants. I got them in in what 2008, I think August. No. For DCC. Right before DCC. It was a year before. But I got them in August of 2008. And then I got them out in May of 2020. So I had them for about 12 years. Almost And 13. that was a whole... Almost, I mean, you should talk about that. That uh, Well, that was a whole process. A whole process in and of itself. Of, I forgot of about going. that. <laughs> I wondered, I, you know, I was going to bring it up. And I was like, well, we can edit it out if you don't talk about it. But, oh, yeah, no. But, you know, I, you know, I... Uh, I actually never really talked about it, I guess, publicly. Which, yeah. whatever. I mean, people that know me know that I did that. And, um, yeah. But I mean, of, of going, you know, if you research breast implant illness... Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a whole thing. It is a whole thing. And I, I really approached it with kit gloves because I didn't expect to like I, I was already being I was already feeling better before I got them out by eliminating the gluten. Mm-hmm. But I was really excited to just be healthy and to get things out that could be toxic and that could could contribute to just inflammation mm-hmm. over my whole body. And I did. I got them out and it's only helped my journey of, you know, getting better. I didn't you know, there's some people that get a little crazy and they're like, oh, I got my implants out and I'm my eyes are brighter. I'm like, OK, and maybe so. Maybe. I, I mean, maybe, you know, but I mean, I didn't expect like, OK, this but is I feel like everything. there is an element of like going. I don't think it was it was lost. Like, I don't think it was all for nothing because oh, I no, think no. I think there's definitely an element of going, look, I'm removing all toxicity from my body. Mm-hmm. And well, I had ca- we all capsules that stuff. and stuff. And yeah. like, I had like mold spots on some of the can- like capsules, which can contribute to which because I tested positive for mold, which I'm like, OK, well, I've had these implants for, you know, 12 years and I had you know, the, the, your body forms these capsules around them. Yeah. And, you know, mine weren't as bad as some people had saline implants, and but there were still spots and stuff once they removed them out of my body. And I, it was weird because it's like I felt like I could, like, breathe again. It, it was such a weird – because I'd had them for so long, you forget – like, you forget what – that's just, like, your life, and you forget mm-hmm. about it. And I remember um, – I don't even know. Like, I've never ha- had implants. I don't even know what that would feel like. I mean, you know? and it's now – and I mean, people say all the time, like, you're healthy now, you know, would you do it again? And I'm like, no. Now, is it, it's not fun to go from, oh, I have nice boobs to like, you know, I mean, I have something. I'm not like super flat, but at the same time for me, I always tell women it was more important for me to be healthy from the inside out. And, um, there's nothing wrong if people decide they want to do them. But for me, I'm like, Hey, I want to be healthy. I want to be, um, I don't want foreign objects in my body because it doesn't matter what you do, even like knee replacements or implants, like it it makes your inflammatory markers totally go up. And if I'm knowing I'm having issues, 
I had no question getting rid of it. And I've yeah. talked to so many women that are like, you know, I guess I would maybe like, want to live like this, you know, because I'm just too afraid to get my implants out. I'm like, girl, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. Don't do it. Just get them out. You know, I mean, it's don't like. Don't do it. You no. That real. Don't do don't it. Don't do it. Don't. Oh, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> don't do it. But I honestly, I didn't have as hard of a time as I thought I would from a vanity perspective. Because, so again, I, I cared too much about being healthy. Too yeah. much about. It's cool. Awesome. If I'm flat chested, whatever. I, I it's don't, actually in style right now. It, you know, you know I, I, I think it's cute. Like, I don't know. Well, and you know, I, I just wanted to be healthy yeah. and they don't tell you a lot of things and they've actually, I think the FDA has actually approved breast implant illness. There's so many women I met along the journey of deciding to do that, that had experienced terrible symptoms symptoms when and you read through the list of breast I implant had every illness, single one of them. almost like a lot of the people I know with implants have a handful of the symptoms, like more than one. Well, our bodies aren't designed so. to have these things in them. Mm-hmm. They're not. And I didn't know anything about that when I did it. When I was 18, almost yeah. 19 years old. I mean, obviously looking back now, I wouldn't knowingly ever put something like that in my body. I'm a different human than I was at 18 or 19, you know, mm-hmm. but now just with my knowledge of inflame, like what can cause inflammation in your body, like the foods we eat, like I just would never you know, never do it again. Like, do I miss being like, oh man, I have nice round, nice, perfect boobs. Yeah. Like it sucks. That's not, not fun. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, like my goal is different to yeah. be just healthy and, you know, and I'm, to feel good. I have an and- awesome husband and, you know, he was really supportive. He just, I mean, he was like, I'll do anything for my wife to yeah. be my wife again. He just loves you, you know? And I mean, that's so evident. He wants to just like, I feel like Tyler like would do anything he could he if he would. could like fix it right now or make everything, all of the pain or the, that was so the hard process that you've gone through. Like, I feel like he would do anything to make oh, yeah. you feel better. So I feel like, you know, I was whether it's spending weird the about money or this first. or that, I'm like, I feel like he would go to the end of the earth, you know? He would. So and he's that's such something a good husband. He is. And that was so hard. It's been hard for him. You know, when yeah. you're like my wife who was young and, you know, I'm used to her energy and, you know he's been so happy just to have me back. I mean, yeah. for two years, I mean, when you don't have your health, you don't have anything. I mean, yeah. for, I mean, I was not, I was a shell of myself. Yeah. I was just existing. That's yeah. how I felt. It literally doesn't matter what you have. If you no, don't feel good. and he was there with me every anything. step of the way, but it's really hard to, I think it's harder to watch someone you love than to be the person dealing with it. And I told mm-hmm. him that I said, I would never want to watch someone I love like that be a shell of themselves. Cause yeah. he's the one who was with me day in, day out, seeing me, helping me through all that. I'm um, being willing to pay whatever, whenever, just to um, see me find that healing. We're almost, yeah. I was like, I don't want to be, you know, he's such a rock. And so that was good, too, because I have a really supportive husband that wasn't like, you can't get your bibs out. Yeah. But even if he was, I'd be like, sorry. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not going to be like this. Yeah. But hopefully it gives some women the courage to like, you know, do it because it's just. Yeah. And I think just to be like I was saying, just be an advocate for your health and just keep trying to find the answers. I, I think that a lot of people will be inspired by hearing some of the stories that you, you know, you've walked through and even like assessing, like, I don't know, who knows, maybe some of these people are experiencing some of the symptoms you felt and go, Oh, maybe it's gluten. Maybe it's this. Maybe I can try to pinpoint what the issue is. Well, Gluten isn't designed for anybody to eat it. I mean, people that don't agree with me, fine. That's true. Whatever. I mean, some people don't agree with me, but nobody is designed to process that. Yeah. So I don't care if you don't have symptoms like me. It's just not good for you. Yeah. Obviously, these days, too, it's hard to get nutri- like actual nutrition when you do go gluten-free to make sure that you get the nutrition that you need from other sources. Because mm-hmm. even some gluten-free products, they're higher in fat. They're, I mean, so I've yeah. been through all all the things of now being like, sort of what like should like I be relearning eating? relearning how to like buy eat. groceries or how to eat or how, how to, to cook, cook, how to prep. Know? I mean, it's been, you know, two and a half years now. And I do see people ask me a lot, well, how do you, how did you get to this place? I mean, it was overwhelming. In the beginning, yeah. I cried all the time because I had to completely retrain what I grew up in. Yeah. Um, and now that I have way more knowledge just on what it is, where, what foods are good, what are in the, what, what products do I, you know, use and, um, start, you know, getting back on my juice a day in the morning is so good for your gut health, celery juice, especially. But yeah. So if some of you, you know, have those issues, like, reach out yeah where I'm happy to answer any questions like good about that because there's so many women that are like I think I might have this or I've had all these autoimmune Mm -hmm. issues and I can't find the root of it and it was wild to me that that it could have been a simple you might be allergic to gluten let's test you and let's test you for celiac and let's I mean I mean, because I am at a place where I believe that's the root. Because, I mean, my body went to this, like, cytokine storm. Like, everything was inflamed. I had every symptom you could have. But Mm -hmm. then nobody could 
tell me. And I refused to get on antidepressants. I refused to get on these things that these people were Saying recommending because they're like, you're whatever. just, you know, the serotonin. Lo-. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. something is wrong with me. Yeah. And it came out of nowhere because I wasn't alert. Like I didn't have this issue processing gluten when I was It's crazy. Young. Yeah. So you don't naturally gravitate towards these. All of a sudden these allergies can onset, but they can, especially mm-hmm. after pregnancy and mm-hmm. after um, traumatic things in life. Like these things that were dormant can just activate. Yeah. And in my case... Um, that's what's happened. And I'm at peace with, I actually haven't eaten an ounce of gluten, I think in three weeks now. And I think I've lost four pounds. It's crazy. Isn't that weird? <laughs> and doing nothing. Yeah. Doing, doing nothing, nothing different. Besides and that, I've guess. had zero stomach symptoms. I mean, you saw me like you were over here. You stayed with us a couple weekends ago. Remember? And I ate and you like, were, you felt horrible. I ate like tomatoes. Like I ate like literally I ate like tortilla chips and pico. Yeah. Like before you got over here and my stomach you guys was distended like I looked pregnant Mm -hmm. I couldn't even I couldn't even move I looked (laughs) pregnant couldn't even move um and I laid on my floor in my room when she was over here because I was like miserable yeah from eating pico stomach pain is actually the worst like that I mean well head pain it's all sucky it's all bad but like when you when you you have to heal your gut and so that's what I'm doing meaning you know not eating certain like inflammatory foods I still drink coffee I won't I won't give that up but yeah I don't care it's my one thing but I try not to drink it on an empty stomach because it's so bad for people that have, you know, celiac and, and just gut issues. But yeah, I mean, it's e- quite the process. I, I, hey, again, I'm just back to squ- back to like, okay, well I'm, I've accepted it. Like I'm not going to introduce it whatsoever. And I've noticed a vast difference already in just three weeks, which from, is such a positive, not even a little bit of it. Like I was already like this during the week, but like, you know, we'd be together on the weekend and I might eat like canes. Yeah. Or like a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich, which they're, their like chicken has gluten, like the, what they fried in has gluten in it or wheat and in it. And the breading and stuff, right? The breading of the chicken, I believe, yeah. is what has the, because the grilled chicken doesn't. But that right there would, like, even just eating a grilled, you know, a, or a sandwich from Chick fil A would derail me 20 steps. So yeah. then I would start a few days later having from one sandwich. Yeah. And I'm going, what the heck? But now that I understand what celiac is, what I understand the gluten intolerance is and all the things, it's yeah. like, okay, well, I can just make informed decisions now, be smart, eat right. Mm-hmm. And, that's just where I am right now. And I'm okay with that. It actually gives me more peace because I'm like, now we can finally figure out what's the root of a lot of it. Yeah. Which is wild. And you'll feel so much better overall. Yeah. I felt way better. Just not even having like anything. Mm -hmm. Cause I was getting real lax. Like, Oh, Taya's like Dunkaroos. I'm going to a little bite. She's like, girl, you can't do that. Yeah. You know? And so it's been quite the That's process. Good. I mean, be another episode we can talk about just from what I learned from a spiritual perspective Emotional through all of that and, and what God side. did in my life and my, and my body and my heart. I think we should, because I think that would encourage a lot of people who are walking through health things. And even that translates over to just the, the hard things that we walk through. Mm. And, and it was a wilderness season. Really it could be even anybody. away in the wilderness. Cause that yeah, along with the infertility will, was, it was a double I mean, whammy. And I I've, was, and so many people okay. deal with those things and obviously other things as well, but just like the things that the Lord spoke over you and reminded you of and how you kept, you know, kept going in those I'm, hard I'm where I am today because of that, yeah. of these seasons, that these testing seasons, God wasn't punishing me. So, you know, I think we associate hardship with punishment, or at yeah. least I did, because I'm always like, I want to be the best. I want to do things right. Yeah. Like, why are you punishing me? What have I done wrong? Where did I miss it? Mm-hmm. I ask God that question a lot of times. Where a did I miss it? A lot of us evaluate that. Yeah. yeah. Where did I miss it, Lord? Like, have I made poor choices? Like, what 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 are these things, you know, going on? And so I'm just not the same human from yeah. going through some of these really tough, you know, hopeless experiences. And I'm really thankful that it wasn't something worse than that, mm-hmm. you know, it, you put everything into perspective. I mean, I felt horrible and I was like, this is not good, but I wasn't dying. Yeah. And I had to really, I felt like I was, Mm -hmm. I mean, it felt like a prison cell, Yeah, but I am just thankful for the process being on the other side of it. That's why I never spoke about it in it because the Lord like never gave me really permission to talk about that in that time of pain because I was still seeing it from a painful perspective, not how good he was through it. Even when I didn't feel like he was good. I mean, I told God I hated him and that I hated this and I'd rather be like an atheist. (laughs) I mean, there was crazy things I said in my quiet time because I was just like, what, what is this? Mm -hmm. Why is this my life? But it was like the less of me, the more dependent I became on him. And it really showed me, you know, not in my strength 
Yeah. Do I like, walk like that this verse, life? that verse in Zechariah four, it says not by power, not by might, but, but by, by the, your spirit. By the that's what strength I was, that, of the Lord. that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, I read that this morning and I, and I, I think about that a lot for myself and my own stuff. Cause I'm always trying to do things on my own. Not anymore, but I was, and so yeah, but yeah, not by and my mom always, always reminded that. of that is like, it's by the spirit of the Lord, not by our strength. No. You know? And I, I mean, I had made everything happen by my strength throughout my whole life. So, you know, yeah. I was this, this season, the last five, six, um, years has really been me really finding the reality that like I do nothing apart of apart from him yeah. everything that I do like if he doesn't show up I'm incapable right right and I I used to be like if I show up I'm capable right talented I got it going on yeah. but that really really Just taught dying me to self. we all go through that so that it's good. not by you know I, was, I read a lot of Job I love Job <laughs> you remind me of Job I, re- I love Job. I read a lot of that because I felt so um, and then I, I kind of anticipated, well, what's next? Mm-hmm. And we've talked about that. Yeah. Great. So this is happening. It was almost You're like waiting a, for the next ball to drop. And I think. And that's even been more recent, which we can talk, you know, about yeah. some of the other things that we've found that just have happened in the middle of it all. And it's just like, the Lord's like, stop that. Yeah. But I was like, what? Almost looking over my shoulder, like what other terrible thing is going to happen to me? Yeah. And that's just not how God. Like, God like nah, that. it's a lie. You know, yeah. we can't think like that. But yeah, we'll talk about more it's of good. what I God did. I think that did. would be a good one. Because this is like, it, it's more than one episode. Yes. After years of what I've done, more than one episode. I think that's good. Thanks for <laughs> sharing all that. I feel like people will really be interested in that and encouraged by your story. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Well.